It's no secret that you can create some amazing calendars using Canva to capture all of your photo memories. You can create annual calendars as well as monthly calendars. Well, I'm going to show you how to create a photo memories calendar that also doubles as a desktop wallpaper. My name is Kat. This is Canva Cat Day. Let's get to it. Here is an example of a photo memory template that I've already created. You can see I did this for the month of September. I added all of the dates and then I placed photos in each of the squares to help me remember birthdays, anniversaries, or some type of special event. I also added some fun graphics for maybe some holidays or anything else that I would like to keep track of. I'm going to show you how to create a calendar like this from scratch but I'll also show you how you can alter an existing template that's already in Canva. You can take any of the pre-made calendar templates and add your photos to this as well. Just in case you don't wanna do it everything from the beginning, you can do it this way by using one of those templates. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what size do you need to create for your computer. And that's gonna be determined by the screen resolution of your specific device. I will put some detailed instructions down in the description below, both for Mac and PC, to show you how you figure that out. They're usually in the settings menu, so I'll show you how to do that. I already know from mine that my screen resolution is 2560 by 1440, so that is the size wallpaper I'm going to create. Once you have figured that out, it's time to create your wallpaper. Now, I find the easiest way to do this so that everything is nice and lined up is by using grids. That's down here in Canva. We're going to use some grids rather than using individual photo frames because that way we don't have to worry about messing with alignment or anything. So we're going to use photo grids so that everything lines up perfectly. I'm going to go over here to file, click on settings, and I want to turn on my guides. You want to set the guides to custom and then have seven columns for seven days of the week put a gap of about 10 pixels and then five rows because some months do have five weeks. And again, a gap of 10 pixels and then click add guides. Once you've done that, you can see you have a nice grid. Everything is evenly spaced and that's gonna make it much easier for us to align everything. Then you're gonna scroll down in the grids menu until you find one that is seven rows across because there's seven days to the week. So we're going to scroll down here. This one right here is seven. So we'll click on this and you can see it added to our design. Everything is exactly in line. The only thing left is to just drag this bottom handle so that it falls in line with that first week. So there we have week one. Everything is nice and evenly spaced. Then you're just going to duplicate this a couple of times so that it matches the rest of the spaces that are in the grid. So we have five weeks, we need to have five grids. So I'll duplicate this and add this in. And I'll just do it a couple more times. And there we have everything nice and even. Once this is finished, you can turn those grid lines off. You don't have to have them on there if you don't want to. Just go back to settings and clear your guides. You'll notice that this is a little larger than what I have here. I recommend when you're creating this that you leave a little bit of room on the top, bottom, and sides because you need to have space for that menu bar at the top if you're on a Mac or the task bar on the bottom if you're on a PC, as well as on the left and the right sides because that's where all of your icons show up. So if you put everything like this, you're gonna be hiding some of your photos. So make it just a little bit so you've got those, those little extra borders. So to do that, you're just going to highlight all of those grids that you just placed, and you can just click these bottom corner handles and reduce everything. It's gonna change the size in proportion so you don't have to worry about the alignment for everything. So I'll bring it like this, and I've got a nice amount of space so that I can put everything. Then you're going to add the other elements like your title. So just type T on your keyboard and give it a month. Oops, it would be helpful if I'd spelled it right. 2024, and then I'm going to change my font. I already know for this calendar, I kind of want it sideways. You can place it anywhere that you want. There we go, and I'm going to make it a little larger. And then I'll put this in place. 
right about here. There we go. That's good. You want to give it a background, something fun, whatever you want to choose. I have one here that I already have, and I'll just copy and paste it in there. Next, you want to fill these grid squares with a color, and here's why. If you place your photos and then you download it like this, these little placeholder images are going to download with it, and that's not very pretty. So we want to fill all of these squares with a color. That way it downloads the right way. So just highlight them, click on the color circle, and then just pick a complementary color that matches the rest of your design. Next, we need to add the days of the week. I think I'm going to reduce this a little bit so that I have room for those days right up here at the top. Let me bring this down a little bit. There we go. Next is time for those days of the week. So I'm just going to type the uh, R key on my keyboard to add a rectangle. And I'm just going to make sure that the rectangle is the same width as each of my columns. Right about there. And we're going to bring it right about there. And then I'll just bring this up. Reduce it a little more. There we go. And then I can put my, I can put my date in there. This is Sunday. And you will simply duplicate and repeat this for the rest of the days of the week. Thanks to the magic of video editing, I already have those in there now. Next, it's time to add your numbers for each day. There are two ways that you can do this. You can simply type T on your keyboard, add that number and place it in each of the squares if you want to. You'll do this for each square all the way across. I like to do it a little bit differently. I like to use a table. I find it's a little bit easier because then if I ever have to move it or change it, I can do it all in one shot. So to do that, you're going to click on the elements tab and you want to go to tables. I'm going to choose this first one right here, the one that's plain, and I'm going to add that to my design. <clears throat> right now, it's not enough columns. It's only three columns across and four rows down. We need to make this so that it matches our grid. So I'm going to click on these three dots and just add another row so that I have five. And then up here at the top, I want to make sure that I'm adding, hang on, let me click it again. There we go. I want to make sure that I'm adding additional columns for my seven days of the week. So I'm just going to click it until I get to seven. One more. There we go. I have seven across and I have five down. Then we just resize it so that it matches our grid. So I'm going to drag this corner handle and match it to the top right there, and then drag the bottom corner handle and match it to the bottom right there. The grid by default has these lines. We don't want those. So just click on the grid, click on the uh, border option right here, then click on lines and set your border to none. That way that will disappear. Then you're just going to click on the first box and start entering your numbers all the way until you have the entire month filled. Once that's done, we need to make a couple other adjustments. You'll notice that your numbers fall in the middle of the square. We don't want that. We want to adjust that. So go up here to the top where it says spacing and adjust the vertical alignment so that everything falls at the top and then choose whether or not you want your numbers to appear on the left side or the right side. I'm going to do left alignment. If you want the right alignment, you can do that as well by clicking on that. And there is the base for our calendar. Now it's time to start adding some photos. So I'm going to go to some images. Now watch what happens if I try to drag a photo in there. It's not letting me place it in that square. And that's because currently my top layer is this number grid that we just created. We have to bring that down to the bottom and kind of get it out of the way temporarily in order for us to add our photos. So go over to position. And then this is the grid we created with our numbers. Just drag that to the bottom for right now. We're going to put it back when we're finished. You can see that disappears. That goes down to the bottom layer. And then we can place our photos. So you're just going to drag them into each of the squares wherever you want them to be. Uh, let's do this one. And how about this one? Like that. There we go. Once that's done, you can then bring the grids back up. 
If you want to adjust the sizes of any of the photos, just double click and you can change the alignment or maybe even adjust the size a little bit like that. So you can see it a little bit closer. Then you're gonna go back to position and you're going to bring that number grid back to the top where it was. There we go, like that. Now it's back on top. Then you can do some additional fun things like add some extra graphics. Maybe there's some holidays that are coming up. So maybe there is, we'll do school because school is in September and you can add a couple fun extra graphics to maybe some additional dates. Just click on it and place it. It won't place in the photo grid because remember our numbers are on top. So you don't have to worry about it accidentally going inside one of those photo grids. And let's also do Labor Day. And we'll add a fun graphic there like that one. Let me resize this and I'll place this right here. Just like that. Oh, it's a little big. There we go. And there is that calendar. Now, how do you do this with a pre-existing template? So let me show you that. Here I have a pre-existing Canva template. I just did a search for November calendar and this one popped up. You can see I've already placed a couple of photos. Most of the templates in Canva have each of the dates as a separate square. So it's really easy to add your photos. You'll just go over to elements and you will go down to where you have frames. Pick on that one single frame, not a grid this time, just a frame. You're going to click on that and just make the size the same as whatever the squares are in that specific calendar. And then you can place your photo inside there. Bring this up and bring this up. And then you just place your photo right inside like that. So that's how you can do it with the pre-existing calendars. There's thousands of them that are available in Canva. I, I think there's about 5,000 right here just on monthly calendars. But if you do like different months, like January, February, March, you'll have a whole bunch of calendars that are available here. So you can use any of these pre-made templates if you don't really want to start everything from scratch. Now it's time to download your creation to your device. So you're going to go over to the share icon. You're going to click download. And I only need this last page. I had a couple other versions that I was working on. You're going to download it and download this to your computer. And then I'm going to show you how to set it as your desktop. I'll put specific instructions for both Mac and PC on where to find those settings to set this as your wallpaper, just in case you don't know where they are. I have a folder on my computer for all of the desktop wallpapers that I create. It's just easier for me to put them all in a folder, but you can put this wherever you want to on your computer, whether that's your photos folder or someplace specific. So I'm going to take that photo that downloaded and I'm going to bring it into my folder so that I have it. And then I'm going to set it as my wallpaper. Now I'm on a Mac. So on a Mac, you're going to open up your system settings and you're going to scroll down to wallpapers and then just navigate to the folder where you placed all of those images. Mine is in my specific wallpaper folder. I have two monitors on my Mac. So if you have multi monitors, you can choose which one you want that wallpaper to appear. Most people only have one monitor, but I have two. I'm going to set it on my second monitor and then I'm going to just choose that wallpaper. And there you go there's the wallpaper that you created with all of those fun photo memories. And you can do this for every month and have a different one for every month with different colors, different backgrounds, or whatever you like. Now, remember when I told you you want to leave a little bit of extra room? That's because on a Mac, you've got this menu bar at the top, as well as the dock that's at the bottom. You also have a taskbar on a PC that's at the bottom. And then on the left and the right sides, this is normally where your icons show up and you don't want to really you know, hinder your photos from being seen. You don't want to block any of that by making those photos too large. So that's how come I recommended leaving a little bit of extra space so that you have room for all of those extra things and those extra icons that will appear and show up. If this was helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this in the future. That's all for this week. I'll see you next time.